Wait for a little glow plug light. I should have brought a sandwich to eat. Okay, here we go. So we got the wood stove melting the ice on this thing. And you know, sometimes people ask me, Stretch, you're always getting projects done. What's the secret to efficiency in a metalworking shop? And I'll say it's pretty much the same thing that any mechanic would tell uh, a person as well, which is when a project comes in like this, the secret is to spend as much time as humanly possible fixing a relevant crap that isn't part of the job as you can. For example, pick up that axle thing, it needs some, needs some new axle seals, great! Let's spend our time drilling more holes in the bed of this thing so it'll drain properly. I might regret this very much. Oh, oh I, I thought I left these problems behind for good in Ohio. Nope! Oh well, at least it's only a few weeks. Are you kidding me? Oh, this is a terrible idea. I should not be doing this at all, or at least waiting until I've already fixed the axle. Oh, this is so slick. No! Ah! Pilot bit exploded! Ah, crap, now I have to get myself out of this icy wonderland of doom. Oh boy, this is so bad. I don't know how to do this anymore. Oh, this is how mechanical injuries happen. Better do it anyway, even though it's not at all necessary right now. Oh, there we go. Now, I don't know if y'all knew this or not, and I don't really understand exactly why it works, but you can't use a regular quarter inch bit as a pilot bit. You have to get the kind with these little flat sections. I uh, don't really claim to understand why, but it doesn't work worth anything. I stuck that quarter inch bit in here one day because I didn't have any more pilot bits, and uh, well, so you can see it didn't work out too well. Oh, shaky diggy. Oh. oh, stupid ice. I can't wait to go back to complaining about how hot it is. Yeah. What the? Oh, are you kidding me? What is going on with this? Patience is for doctors. I'm on a mission now. How does this even happen? Rule number one of shop hackery. If you don't set out to create a round hole, no one will notice how not round it is. All right, why am I out of breath right now? Okay, now the sooner we start taking this apart and get wheels and everything all over my shop, the sooner we can figure out the seals they sent are the wrong size. Oh, here we go, oh, that's... That is nasty. <laughs> yeah, let's bother mechanic Steve. <laughs> he likes you. Do you think the inside of that pumpkin's cleaner? Yeah, dad. I eat my own vomit and even I thought that was nasty. <laughs> uh, you want a, a screwdriver or a pry bar? Uh, pry bar. <laughs> this is cozy. Lucky, go lie down. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> I got the differential cover off and to pull these axles, the actual axles out, there's these little clips right in here. You see me kind of spin it around right there? I call those C clips. But to pull them out, we gotta take this uh, bar out. I forget the proper name, but somebody will correct me. They always do. So you just take this bolt out, this pole, this bolt is just a pin on the end and it's pinned into this uh, bar. So you pull that bolt out, the bar just slides out. And then once you get the bar out, then we can push the axles in this way and pull that clip out. But, you know, for future reference, if you do do this, you break the head off, just pull the whole freaking differential out. And scrap it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's the famous C-clip. Yeah. So you push the axle in towards the center and it Wiggle set. Oh! One job, Steven! Good deal. Alright, you want me to kick this thing? Yeah. Or? Yeah, just kick it towards us. Oh, wow, that was really easy. I mean, that's that it. just. Wow, that just fell right out. Yeah, that's the only thing holding your axles in. Nice! Dude, these things were cheap. The, uh,. The axle seals themselves, I think I paid like $4 for, yeah. shipping included. And the pintle seal, you guys, pintle seal, uh, or potato seal, or pin, 
pin hitch seal or whatever that's called. Uh, you know, that thing was like six bucks or something shipped. Wow, it's an axle! Dude, that'd make the perfect bale spear. All right, so we're gonna use our proper seal puller here. That was actually in there surprisingly tight. Yeah. So that's out. We can pull that bearing. Do you have any bearings? No. Too cheap, Dude. it's a farm trailer. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, they look fine. Don't go to the trouble of pulling these bearings out unless you have a new one on hand. I mean, there's just, there's no sense in it. If you guys are watching this, wondering what's up, this video is going on Steven's channel as well because he actually came by to work on these Zetoa. There we go, not Zetter. Uh, <laughs> and I'm like, hey, let's work on this because I didn't get it done this morning because I did a bunch of other stuff instead of just screwing with this, like cutting holes into bed and breaking multiple pilot bits and making a socket video for no apparent reason. It's like somebody in your uh, Pathfinder video. <laughs> I like that. I was like, does he just stop answering your calls at some point or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> no. You want two by four to put over that and hit it? Nah. It'll be all right. Well, hey, so at least one dimension of this looks like it fits. That's one more than I was counting on. Normally, I'm not this negative, but I mean, this thing is in my shop, like blocking everything, and we have stuff we need to work on. So as you guys know, that increases the chances of problems with parts fitting like 300% at a minimum. I'm sure Steve can tell us all about that. Oh yeah, you know, it's like whatever job you think is gonna be an easy job and take 10 minutes and multiply that by a billion or something. <laughs> and that's how you estimate time. It should be all right. All right, cool. So when you're driving a seal in, just drive it in towards flush with the outside housing. Okay. You can obviously, you can put a seal driving tool if you have one or a two by four in front of it and smack it with a, a normal hammer. Mm -hmm. I like to use something like this on these type of seals because I can kind of feel it and see it kind of to go in equally. A lot of okay. times when you put a two by four on there and you start whacking away at it, you can't see the seal. So you uh, whack it, pull it back, whack it, pull it back. But that's a valid own. point. All right, well, do we stab this thing back in? Yep. Steve, I'm glad you're here, but I'm even feeling like I probably could have figured this out if you hadn't stopped by. No. <laughs> the professional oil change technician. Master certified <laughs> YouTuber mechanic to do. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go ahead and pull the pinion sill off this um, um, pencil seal. Pencil seal. <laughs> pinion seal off the. Um, <laughs> Uh, the trailer, uh, Chucky's trailer here, this half back of a Chevy pickup. But to pull these off, all you gotta do is pull this nut off. I think it's a whatever inch and a quarter or something. So let's see if we can get it off. So that comes off pretty easy. There's your nut. Now, usually these are locked, some kind of lock nut on there. Um, you're supposed to replace these, but keep in mind this is a trailer. This is not going to be driven. <laughs> yeah. So pull it off. Um, Sometimes these guys will slide off pretty easy. Sometimes they won't. Man, that's a lot of slop. You think those bearings have seen better days? Yeah. Cause this isn't even loose. I have a feeling, I, I have reason to believe someone actually pulled a gooseneck with this truck. Yeah. I don't remember, in fact, if you look up, yeah, yeah. there's the hole right there. <laughs> so we need a, where's that ball peen? Well, I was about to offer the air hammer. Was that harder than they usually are to remove? No, that's about about right. There we go. It's the wrong seal. Are you kidding me? How much is it off? Oh, um, sixteenth of an inch. Oh no. Eight. We can't just wrap it in electrical tape. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, so uh, we pulled the front seal out of this pinion. Um, and we went down to the store, Chucky had one, but it was the wrong one. We went down to the store, tried to find another one. It's the wrong one. So we don't know what axle this is. So this is on a trailer, you know, so we don't need a, a pinion on it. We don't need a yoke or anything. So we've opted to just uh, pull the axles back out, pull the carrier assembly back out and pull the pinion out. And we'll just leave the pinion out of it. There we go. All right, look away for another second. All right. Oh, this, 
I think it's gonna work. All right, so that's kind of nasty. There's a lot of crap that smoked out of that. So I'm gonna let this cool for a couple minutes and I'm gonna give it an, at least one more pass, maybe two. But man, that pipe slug, that uh, round bar slug, it fit perfectly in here. And using this design, I'm able to just hit it and go like that as opposed to having to position myself like back here and weld around this thing. Yeah, whose idea was that? Mine. No! <laughs> I actually don't remember. But either way, thanks for taking all the parts out of this thing, dude. So another problem with this thing is it's really kind of a pain to add oil to it because that side fill plug is like completely coated in rust. So what I decided I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add the tried and true farmer fill bolt here. Life knows few pleasures like a good sharp drill bit. So this is one of these Chinese, uh, I call them pine tree drills. And I was a little apprehensive about these because the whole set was only like 20 or $22 or something but it's actually been a pretty good set. I use these things all the time and I've yet to break one or bend one or whatever. So shoot, I don't know, probably two, three steps. Low speed for this one. There. Get one more just for extra clearance, clearance. Yeah, what's nice about these, you might not be able to see it on the GoPro, but they work to deburr holes as well. Yeah, all right, uh, this ought to work. All right, so this pumpkin is no longer on fire, so it's time, <laughs> time to clean the old RTV off. I operated this in a very specific way, so the wires are flinging stuff away from this, not flinging stuff into this. Yeah. All right. Oh, static shock. Okay. So this is the big moment. Uh, we have let the front of this cool from the weldering process. We have RTV'd the back on. I put about three gallons of oil, or yeah, yeah, that's, that's exactly. Three gallons of oil in here, and now it's time to install the uh, fill bolt with a copper washer so it'll seal real nice. And, uh, and not let in air or water or whatever. And, uh, and a little bit of antices because I think we baked most of the coating off of this bolt. And so now hopefully it won't be completely impossible. Uh, why do I keep getting shocked? Steven, do you understand static electricity? That's the second time that happened. That kind of hurts. Uh, yeah, whatever I was saying. So now we can Probably service this later. <laughs> Do you know where my other glove is? Or are you an expert on that? Huh? Do you know where my other glove is? Or are you an expert on that? Oh, there it is. <laughs> all right, I'm listening. So tell us all about static electricity. Well, I invented static electricity before. Like, people just didn't know how it worked. And... Thank you for that. All right, so we got the wheels on. I think we're finally done with this thing for now. For now. And once again, I've brought this in first thing in the morning and it's well after dark by the time we're done with this. The difference is this time, at least we got to work on some other stuff uh, as well. Gotta have good old mechanic Steve come out and save the day. Yes, mechanic Steve. Yeah, don't forget to subscribe to his channel if you're not already, by the way. Yeah, subscribe. He actually makes his own videos instead of just bailing me out of crap projects <laughs> on mine. Yeah, no, I have learned there is a point where things actually start to take longer when, as you increase the number of people. <laughs> Gonna squirt some WD-40 on this. Yeah, I guess it depends on who you have in the shop and what you're doing. It's done. Happy New Year! Literally, it's the 1st of January. <laughs> <laughs> we're filming this. Oh, we're supposed to take the day off, remember? Oh, shoot, oops. <laughs> Let's see if the wheels still stay on. 
It's very warm today. It's only like uh, 21 degrees or something like that in the Tejas. Nice. Sit. Say, ruff. Ruff. Good boy. Good boy. Hey, See, I told you guys it was actually freezing cold. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, it of course. It actually does get cold here. Oh. All right, ready to turn this off? Yes. Say bye-bye. Later.